Pay drivers have been around in motorsports since the very beginning of time. Some, however, are way more talented than others. In the case of Riley Herbs, he has already made a name for himself by the young age of 22. However, it's not in the most positive way. It says a lot about your career when this is your most well-known moment thus far. We, we're looking at the car here, actually, and it doesn't look like too much damage cosmetically. What do you guys think it was that took you out here? Uh, the car's killed. Look at the right side of the thing. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't see the right side over here. So Riley Herbst out in today's K&N race. What a douchebag. So Riley Herbst in trouble here on lap number one. Today we'll take an honest, in-depth look at the NASCAR career of Riley Herbst up to this point. This is the Riley Herbst Experience. This video is sponsored by Felix Gray Computer Glasses, the hardest working eyewear. Find relief from your worst eye strain from daily screen use. The human eyes weren't meant to look at screens all day. It messes with our eternal balance, which affects our sleep, causes stress, headaches, blurry vision, and general eye fatigue. Felix Gray Glasses filter 15 times more blue light from screens than other clear blue light lenses to help restore your balance. Blue light lenses come standard starting at 95 bucks or add your prescription at checkout starting at 145 bucks. If you don't love your glasses in the first 30 days, their in-house customer care team will take care of any exchanges or returns. No hassle, no questions asked. Show your eyes some love with some glasses your eyes will definitely love. A huge thanks to the fine folks over at Felix Gray Computer Glasses and you for supporting this channel. If you couldn't have guessed already, Riley Herbst does come from a background of wealth. For some odd reason, some motorsports fans like to hold this against a lot of drivers that come from this background, but the thing is, you do need money in racing in order to advance your career. But at the same time, that money is not going to be able to drive for you. Riley's family does own a chain of gas stations called Terrible Herbs. Hence where the nickname comes from. Whenever he runs bad, that's the nickname everybody immediately goes to. But if we're gonna look at this objectively, has he really been that bad? His progression in racing is pretty much the same of any other up and coming driver. Began racing karts at an early age and then later progressed to legends and then late models. Besides a truck championship at Irwindale Speedway, he really wasn't winning anything else. Then out of nowhere in 2016, he lands a ride in the K&N West series with Bill McNally Racing, scoring only 10 top 10s and 14 starts. It's decent progression, sure, but then fast forward a year later and he's all of a sudden moved up to the ARCA series with Joe Gibbs Racing? Riley Herbst has mastered the tricky triangle. Riley Herbst, your winner of the General Tire Anywhere is Possible 200. Getting a heck of a shower from his team here for his first career win in the ARCA series. Watching from the outside would suggest that Riley Herbs must be pretty damn good to move up the ranks so quickly. But the reality is that he's pretty much able to fit the bill for whatever ride he so desires. And yes, he did have some nice moments here and there, but his two year stint for Joe Gibbs Racing in ARCA was usually like this. Got a very fast race car, but it's hard to pass here when cars are side Whoa. by side. Hard into the wall is Riley Herbst, almost 70 laps into this one. He had to have a car coming up on his right hand side for that car to just veer. Chandler Smith. Uh, oh, big, contact ooh, to three and four. Contact. Cars into the wall, everybody checks up. And wow, Chase Purdy and Riley Herbst involved yeah, yeah. in turns three and four. Smith, and then Herbst goes around, big contact, taking Josh Williams with him. Caution. Overtime number two is coming. See, Herbst moves to the inside of Sheldon Creed. Here comes Joe Graff. Looks like there was contact between the 28 of Creed and the 18 of Herbst. And it turned Herbst right into the path of Sean Core in the 46. Only one win in two full-time ARCA seasons in Joe Gibbs racing equipment. Despite having 25 top 10s in that two-year span, in equipment like that, you're expected to win an ARCA series championship. That's just the reality of it. He put up points finishes of fifth and third in that two-year span, but it didn't matter to the fan base. So you could imagine in 2018, the reaction to him racing in the truck and Xfinity series wasn't exactly the most positive, especially when it's in some of the 
best equipment the series has to offer. His career in the NASCAR Truck Series has only spanned nine races in four seasons up to this point, but the results have been pretty lackluster. His first four career Truck Series starts for Kyle Busch Motorsports in 2018 saw only one top 10 finish. He was usually running well off the pace of where that equipment should be. In 2019, he nearly scored his very first career Truck Series victory at Talladega. His three starts in 2019 saw slight improvement with only one top five and two top tens, and 2020, he opened up the season with a pole at Daytona, but still never a true contender for wins outside of super speedways. He also made 10 starts during this two-year span from 2018 to 2019 in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Now keep in mind, this entry had a rotation of drivers who would be in and out of the ride each and every week. Of course, Kyle Busch would usually show up and dominate in this ride. However, in the case of Riley Herbst, he was kind of meh. Only four top tens in two seasons, not a single top five finish in Joe Gibbs racing equipment. And an even more daunting stat line, only one lap led in two seasons. Riley Herbst was simply not getting the job done. Parts of the fan base vilify him. Whenever they feel a pay driver is getting a multitude of opportunities and is not capitalizing on them, they basically view that as wasted equipment. In the case of the next announcement you're about to see, you could have guessed the fan base basically revolted once this came out. Yo, Manny. Yo, Riley, what's up? You wanna grab some lunch? I gotta stop by JGR first, but uh, I can meet you in like 30 minutes if that works. Sure, man, I'll see you there. All right, cool, I'll meet you there. What's up, Riley? What up, dude, you ready to go eat? Yes, sir. Let's go. Thanks. Yeah, I got you. Oh, yeah. Chicken. Thank you. Hmm. Says Raleigh Herbs. This you full time next year? Yeah, that's me, bro. Yeah, that's me, bro. Huh. Yeah, that's him, bro. Full time in the NASCAR Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing after all of that. It's one thing to see him run part time but to see him switch to the full-time scene, that was going to be an adjustment. Every little mistake was going to be examined under the microscope from here on out, which makes his 2020 season one of the worst in recent memory. Watch the 18, right in the middle there. So he might have moved down. down. Wasn't quite clear. Can't tell who that was that he got into. Hard hit right there. It might snide, it looks like he might have got collected. Harrison Burton just barely sneaks through there on the bottom. Just wasn't quite The clear. 92, Josh Williams, I yeah. think, uh, was just barely inside of Riley, and he didn't see him there. Big hit. Chris Cochran right in the door of the 18. Boy, you're running 150, 560 miles an hour. You get turned. It's tough to hang on to them. Actually, Justin Haley got in a wall in front of him. It's just that track narrowing up right there. It yeah. collects so many people. Man, just unfortunate. Leading with 45 laps to go. Not as clean of the getaway as he wanted. Let's see what he's got. No, he missed the bottom. Yeah, he did miss the bottom. Got back in it a little bit, but. Oh, 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 oh boy. And look at this. Worst case scenario. Ah. That's when he was jumping in in the deep end. Yeah, I think. That's tough. He just missed the bottom, and then from there, it just, you get behind on everything. People are on the outside. You're looking in your mirror. You're trying to get back to the bottom. No. Just got too far out from underneath of him. Again, you're walking that thing around the corner on the throttle, driving the thing with the throttle with the grip, and there it come out from underneath of him. Whoa. A bit of a block there on. Was that A.J. Allmendinger that yeah, hurts the tip to the block? Yeah. Oh, man. How man, close was that for A.J.? Barely missed Daniel Hemrick. Oh, he just got turned in oh, the, maybe not. In the trioval. Wow. I go back to, though, you know, Briscoe was up front. Oh, in front of all those cars. And we said he, he might be that. the guy because he had those fresh tires, but he lost the, the lead draft drop back there. And yeah, I'm oh. going to say that was help. Yeah. How do you do? Yeah. Interesting, uh, interesting spot to get help at Pocono. Noah right behind him. Yeah. Don't 
We talked about the aggressiveness of Noah Gregson before this race started. I don't get it. I just don't get it five laps into a race why you have to be that aggressive on a slick racetrack with Riley in front of him. I, I know Noah didn't drive in there with the intention of wrecking the 18. We didn't see the last two or three laps. Maybe the 18 was holding him up. We only saw the end of the story. Sometimes that's when you get your hold. 18 car hard in the wall. I don't hear her yellows out. Stay in front of the seven here. Riley hurts. Right there was your point, Jim. That wasn't far in front of the leader coming out. Yeah. Sliding toward the inside wall, hard on the driver's side door. Not a good deal for this team here. Riley came into here below the cut line. Oh, oh he gets in the back of Noah. And Noah around. All right, he just turned it. And into the tire right barriers. Here. Looks wow. like he's able to keep going. Oh, yeah, couple guys coming behind you Remember, here. these guys had some issues at Texas earlier this year. He's going to take the lead. Oh, barely. oh they're wrecking. Both Noah's of them were the seven. And they pile into him. Barely got the barrier with my back. Justin Algar just by Riley. They're just both of them right there. Lost control. Yeah, so the seven on his own. The 18 definitely had contact from Almond all the Nigger, it appeared. Riley Herbst's 2020 Xfinity Series season is very historic, but unfortunately for all of the wrong reasons. In Joe Gibbs Racing Equipment, you are expected to perform in any series of NASCAR. It doesn't matter what it is. And in his 33 total starts that season, he notched only 17 top 10s. He finally notched that top 5 mark, however, with a total of 4. But once again, equipment like that is expected to perform for championships. So it was once again daunting to the fan base when it was announced that he would be getting another stellar Xfinity Series ride for 2021. In fact, it was the ride that won a total of nine races that season. While Chase Briscoe in 2020 pushed Stuart Haas Racing in the Xfinity Series to a total of nine wins and to a Championship 4 appearance, the Riley Herbst experience thus far has seen a total of only four top tens in 2021. And to add an even worse comparison, some drivers who have been running part-time in 2021 are either ahead or near Riley Herbst in points this season. The reality is this, if any one of us had endless amounts of money to spend, we would definitely further our racing careers and try and get in the best equipment possible. I don't blame Herps for using his resources to help further his career, but when you are getting these stellar rides consistently year in and year out and have yet to perform, obviously parts of the fan base are going to criticize you for it. Maybe we'll see some improvement down the road, but thus far in 2021, it has suggested that this trend will unfortunately continue. Only time will tell if Riley Herbst will be able to shake that terrible Herbst nickname. Let me know down in the comments below if you expect any sort of improvement out of him or if at this point, he's just a lost cause. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.